Hello and welcome to another video from the introduction to machine learning lecture series. So in this video we are going to look at the nearest neighbors methods. Uh, we'll try to look at the different types of uh, different ways we can use the nearest neighbors, right? So let's start the video. Nearest neighbors. We have two types of nearest neighbors learning methods. So the first one is k-neighbors. So this implements learning, uh, this learning method implements learning based on the k nearest neighbors of its query point, where k is an integer value specified by the user. So what happens is, uh, in this case, uh, the query point, which is for example, our um, unseen data, one unseen data point, and if you place it, uh, or you feed it to the model, well, it'll, uh, like the label that it will be assigned will be based on the number of neighbors it is, uh, first of all you'll have to choose the number of neighbors okay so it can be one three five like that and uh, based on the number of nearest neighbors so if in this case for example suppose we our value is k equals to three right in this case is k equals to three which means we are considering three nearest neighbors and based on the uh, based on the uh, highest frequency of the nearest neighbors uh, of the uh, label Okay, so we have two types one is blue one is red but because there are two blue points and one red point and the number of blue points is more therefore therefore this query point or our unseen data point will be assigned uh, the class label blue okay like that and in nearest neighbors the uh, sorry in radius neighbors basically uh, this learning method implements learning based on the number of neighbors within a fixed radius of its training point where r is a floating point value specified by the user so as you can see that uh, uh, we have two circles here we have two circles so for this if our radius r is uh, this much okay so we can say that and this is our green is our data point unseen data point so it will be assigned the red uh, uh, class okay because there are two red uh, data points in this radius okay inside the circle and one blue so this will be red but if we consider the value of r to be suppose this much this bigger circle radius so then you can see that we have three blue and two red so therefore then it, this uh, data point green will turn into blue so like that we uh, assign labels to unseen data okay so now let us uh, see what k nearest neighbors is the KNN algorithm is arguably the simplest machine learning algorithm. Building the model consists only of storing the training data set. To make a prediction for a new data point, the algorithm finds the closest data points in the training data set, its nearest neighbors. In its simplest version, the KNN algorithm only considers exactly one nearest neighbor, which is the closest training data point to the point we want to make a prediction for. The prediction is then simply the known output for this training point. Okay. So now if we look at, it's the same thing. So if you have uh, uh, something like this and suppose the star well, uh, the stars are our unseen data. So in this case, we are just considering one, that is the simplest model where k equals to one. So in the, for this star, this blue point is the closest one and just one uh, uh, trained data point is considered. So therefore, uh, this star is assigned blue label, okay, or blue color, because uh, the blue, the circle which is colored blue is closest to this star. Similarly, for this star, because uh, uh, the triangle is closest to it, therefore it is assigned uh, the red label, okay. So analyzing K neighbors classifier. Using few neighbors corresponds to high model complexity and using many neighbors correspond to low model complexity. So if you consider the extreme case where the number of neighbors is the number of all data points in the training set, each test point would have exactly the same neighbors, all training points, and all predictions will be the same, the class that is most frequent in the training set. So suppose you have uh, 20 um, training points okay 20 train points and we uh, like we uh, feed the model one unseen data point so if our uh, the value of k is 20 like if, uh, all the data points in that uh, training data set 
string data set so what will happen is the uh, so it will be obviously because k is equal to 20 so it will consider uh, 20 closest data point and because the sum total is 20 only sum total that is all data uh, train data points that is present 20 because uh, so the uh, the unseen data point will be assigned the value of the most frequently occurring uh, data uh, train data point okay i hope that makes sense uh, okay i'll, I'll uh, show it to you using a uh, whiteboard i'll explain this to you now so let me open a whiteboard for that okay so we have this um, two uh, labels one is anomaly which is uh, designated by triangle and a red color and uh, normal train data points which are square and green in color okay so first if we consider k is equal to for example if i consider k is equal to uh, for example 5 so let us look at uh, the five closest points to this uh, unknown data point so one is this another one would be this one then third would be this and this one would be fourth and this one would be five right so now if we consider the all these five points you can see that the number of triangles or red or anomaly data points is more uh, compared to the normal one so therefore this will be uh, this unknown data will be labeled as um, uh, an anomaly okay so now uh, <clears throat> so now if we consider that suppose let us consider this k value to be equal to 24 okay so uh, 24 is basically i think uh, we have uh, 24 data points 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 yeah so we have 24 data points in total so now uh, so if i take k equals to 24 that means i want to consider the uh, points 24 data points which are closest to this unknown data so this will include everything that is on this uh, chart right so based on that the uh, if uh, we can see that the number of uh, normal data points is uh, how much how many 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 so there are 13 uh, green and our normal label data and there are 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 11 <coughs> anomaly data points right so based on this we can say that this uh, unknown data will be labeled a uh, it will be labeled as a uh, normal data point right so it will be a normal data point okay so this is how uh, data unknown data is labeled but as you can see that if you have uh, a higher value of k it does not it does not really make much sense because uh, we like uh, we simplify a model it, it is just saying that whichever is occurring the most number of times that is our uh, that should be the label of the unknown data but that is not a really good way of assigning labels to a uh, to an unknown data point so uh, the idea is to have a value of k which is neither too high nor too low so if you have a low value of k you will be overfitting the model and that may not be the best uh, case scenario okay so we want a value of uh, k which is neither too high nor too low and uh, uh, based on the ac like uh, accuracy to unknown data will uh, fi finally take a value of k which is uh, which gives us the most accurate results or predictions right so uh, now uh, there are two important parameters in the k neighbors classifier they are the number of neighbors as we have seen and how you measure distance between the data points okay so let us now open the jupyter notebook and see how to like use the k neighbors classifier i uh, will be using the uh, breast cancer data set uh, from the scikit-learn library so i have opened the jupyter notebook uh, now let's look at how we can apply the k nearest neighbors algorithm using scikit-learn <coughs> so i have uh, imported the required libraries so we'll be using three libraries one is pandas spd numpy 
as NP, these are aliases, and uh, Escalon, okay, which is Cyclone. Then uh, I loaded this uh, uh, breast cancer data set from the uh, scikit-learn uh, data sets, okay. I like data sets which are included in scikit-learn usually stored as bunch objects which contain some information about the data set as well as the actual data. So all you need about bunch objects is that they behave like dictionaries with the added benefit that you can access values using a dot, okay. So uh, let us first look at uh, the keys. So we uh, we printed out breast cancer dot keys and we have these keys, right? So we have data, target, frame, target names, description of the data set, then feature names, file name, and data model. So if we look at the data, it, it is some. It looks somewhat like this, and uh, the features are <coughs> we have mean radius, mean texture, mean perimeter, mean area mean smoothness, mean compactness, mean concavity, so a lot of things, lots of points. So we tried to convert the uh, data set into a pandas data frame and we can see that there are probably 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 15 and uh, 16, 17, 18, 9, 20, 20 uh, feature names, right? So this is an example of a high dimension data. Okay, because the number of feature columns is high. So we printed out the target and target names. So the target are, uh, we have two values, zero and one, and target names are malignant and benign. So basically zero means it's benign, and uh, one means malignant, right? So next what we did is we printed out the description of our data set. So we have uh, 569 rows, this is, uh, these are some information about our uh, feature names, okay, what it means. Then we have some statistics uh, of the features, feature columns, right. So this, then what we did is we imported the train test split data from our scikit-learn dot, from our scikit-learn dot model selection. And uh, this is used to split our data into training set and test set, right? We have discussed this in our previous video, why we need to do that. And uh, then uh, we assigned these variables and loaded our variables with data, right? And we looked at the shape of our data. So now if we, uh, if you'd not uh, like, uh, by default, the, uh, the train test split function uh, segregates our data into two halves okay that is the train set and the test set where 75 percent of the data is assigned to the train set by default and 25 percent is assigned to the test set so if you look at the approximately if you uh, look at the uh, percentage of data in x train set you can see that this is approximately 75 percent right we then instantiated our class uh, uh, under a variable name knn and uh, keeping it simple with number of neighbors equal to one. Then we uh, trained our model, okay, using knn.fit method. And finally, we did our prediction using knn.predict. And uh, yeah, so this is this, uh, we printed out the prediction. So this is what is predicted by our model about, our, uh, about the test data, okay, which is already labeled. The correct, uh, the correct labeling has already been done. But this is what after the model is trained this is what the uh, the model predicted about our test data okay and now if we compare the test data uh, labels with the actual uh, labels of the test set we can see that the accuracy is 91 percent so we can use this model to check whether uh, the cancer is malignant or benign okay so so now let us look at the k neighbor regression KNN regression approximates the association between independent variables and the continuous outcome by averaging the observations in the same neighborhood. The size of the neighborhood needs to be set by the analyst. Neighbors based regression can be used in cases where the data labels are continuous rather than discrete variables. Okay. So while the method is appealing, it quickly becomes impractical when the dimension increases. That is when there are many independent variables. Okay. So now let us uh, open our Jupyter Notebook and look at a k-neighbor regression. So uh, let us now look at how to implement the k-neighbor regression. Um, 
So at first what we do is we import uh, the required libraries. Okay. So we have imported the random library. So this is a uh, this is an inbuilt uh, Python module which is used to generate random numbers. Then we have also imported uh, uh, the mat uh, module which is a built-in Python module which is uh, used for mathematical tasks. And uh, then we have imported the numpy as uh, np and uh, numpy is a library for the Python programming language uh, which adds support for large multi-dimensional arrays and matrices along with a large collection of high level mathematical functions to operate on these arrays. Uh, then we imported the matplotlib as plt. Uh, it is a comprehensive library for creating static, animated and interactive visualizations in Python. Uh, finally, we have the scikit-learn scikit -learn, uh, mat, uh, matrix module uh, and this is used uh, to sort of quantify the quality of our predictions or to say or to like uh, to see how good our model is right uh, and finally we have our uh, k-neighbors regression so now here we have created uh, some data so we have uh, used this do uh, random dot seed method with some number one two three so this seed method is used to initialize the random number generator and uh, the random number generator needs a number to start with a like a, with a seed value to be able to generate a random number by default the random number generator uses the current system time uh, we can use the seed method to customize the start number of the random number generator if you use the same seed value twice you will get the same random number twice okay next uh, we uh, create this uh, we define this function called get data with an argument capital N and inside that we have uh, two arrays basically empty arrays x and y and then we start like uh, a for loop uh, and using the range function which returns a sequence of numbers starting from 0 by default and increments by 1 and stops before a specified number so in, in our case it will be uh, capital N right next we have two variables a and y y where a is equal to i for i it will i will start at uh, 1 right so 1 by 10 plus random dot uniform minus 1 comma 1 so what does this uh, random dot uniform method do the un uh, random is obviously to create a random number but uh, the uniform method returns a random floating number between the two specified numbers both included okay so we'll uh, we, we create a, a floating point number from minus 1 to 1 in that uh, in between in that those two values okay and then basically this this line of code is used to assign a value or uh, like uh, mm, uh, like create a value of uh, a okay basically the, these two lines of code are used to sort of uh, create our data as simple as that and then we append those two values into our empty x and y arrays right and then we return them as numpy arrays okay so in this case our cap ca the value of capital n is 200 so our x and y values will be assigned according to this uh, code logic okay next uh, next is constructing k neighbor regression model uh, so next what we do is we instantiate our uh, k neighbor regressor class and assign this uh, number of neighbors to be equal to 8 right so <clears throat> then uh, the next method that we do or uh, this is this method the fitting method is used to train our data so we have x and y so we use this knn.fit and feed our data so this is uh, training done and uh, next we predict the uh, the values of the test data or the unseen data so we do that and uh, we have saved it in a variable called P R E D underscore Y, and finally we calculate the score. Basically, uh, we <coughs> calculate how uh, closely or uh, how accurate our model is. Okay, so we can see that uh, the score comes out to be zero point five seven, which means that fifty percent, fifty percent points, uh, fifty seven point seven percent of the time our test data is predicted correctly, which is not so high. So this is not a good model. Uh, for our data set uh, next we have MSE which is mean squared error and uh, 
the mean squared error uh, measures how close the regression line is to a set of data points uh, basically it calculates how close the predicted values are to the true values okay so whatever our model predicted how close are those values to the uh, already uh, like exist already labeled uh, test data right because our test data is already labeled but we have uh, trained our model and then uh, try to see and uh, saw how our model predicted those uh, unseen data where uh, the data is already labeled so we compare that so msc is a good parameter to sort of check how close uh, how good our model is to be uh, to simply put it right next we have uh, root mean squared error it's basically when you take the square root of msc you get root mean square error this is also a parameter to sort of uh, check the quality of our model uh, finally we have this uh, x underscore ax where we uh, uh, like uh, define a sequence of numbers okay from uh, c from 1 to 100 so we have c the x axis is we have 0 to 200 right and then we use uh, plt dot scatter method to sort of get the scatter plot so uh, this is the original this blue dots okay so these are the original uh, label data okay and then finally we are using this plot method to plot our predicted data right and uh, this S is used to sort of uh, control the size of those data points or the blue dots. So if you have suppose for example 100, you'll see one second, I guess there is something wrong. Wait, I'll have to rerun everything. So I run this, I run this, I run this. Okay. And yeah so what happens is we can see that when uh, the value of s is set to 100 the size of these blue bubbles increase so this is used to control the size we'll keep it to 5 so yeah and uh, the color is blue and label this is the label so we can see that it is labeled as original and uh, in the plot we use the uh, line so we have line width so 1.5 is the value that we have assigned to line width and the color is red and the label is predicted finally we have the legend which is used to sort of so if you remove this if i comment this this uh, thing will go away this label it will go away okay so we use that to sort of uh, show our uh, labels okay class labels and finally we plot it in our uh, as a uh, as a graph right so this is how we can uh, sort of uh, implement our k neighbors regression So this is how we can construct our k neighbors uh, regression model okay so the strengths of k neighbors classification and regression model are it is easy to understand it is it has some reasonable performance without a lot of adjustments and it is a good baseline method to try before considering more advanced techniques okay or the weaknesses of this model is it is slow in prediction and it is not able to handle uh, high dimensional data or handle many features okay so i think this is it for this video in the next video we'll explore linear model so if you found this video helpful please like this video share it with your friends and do subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon to, to never miss a lecture thank you so much for sticking by and i hope to see you guys very soon thank you